but uh, good thing we still have Adrian here. So Adrian's here to lead us in worship tonight. Uh, so it'll, it'll still be uh, an awesome, awesome night. So um, today I'm not going to share a verse. I usually try and share a verse or something like that, but just want to share. Uh, I got to see a friend today, and it was really awesome. Good friend of mine. He, uh, I saw him a little over a year ago. It was like last Easter, and uh, he, he told me, yeah, we're, we're moving up to Montana. And I was like, oh, Montana. I thought I was moving to France, which is a long story that some of you guys know, and I'm still here. Uh, he moved off, and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm never going to see him again. When, when am I going to see him again? You know, it's going to be years, and, and I, was, I was really sad. And so I wrote him this uh, about two weeks ago because he was on my heart, and I just thought, hey, how's everything going up there in Montana? You know, I hadn't talked to him in a few months. And uh, he said, bro, I'm going to be in Southern California. I'm going to be down for a wedding. Are you going to be there? I'm like, yeah. So I got to meet him for lunch today, and it just, I don't know, it just filled my heart. Like My heart was so full of joy just to be able to connect with that. And it was something I was like, man, I, I don't know when I'm going to see him again. And then I got to see him. And so it's just like, man, how important is fellowship? that we have the opportunity to connect with one another and you know just that we didn't he didn't like preach at me and minister to me he just just tell me about his life and i got to tell him about my life and it was just just good to talk and to share our lives together so um it's kind of cool how that blesses our hearts you know how the lord creates us for that fellowship and then gives us fellowship within the church right so kind of cool so anyway, let me pray for us, and then we'll begin our time of worship. We can praise this amazing God who gave us our, our friends and family in, in the church that we can uh, have that type of fellowship that ministers to our hearts. Father, we thank you uh, for the way that you created us. You created us to be relational. You created us to have uh, relationships with people uh, here in, our, in this world, here in the church. And we thank you so much for the, the awesome people that you put in our lives. And I pray for anyone who's struggling with that, if anyone's feeling like they don't have those friends, that you would direct them uh, to those right people and that you would help us to build those awesome relationships and that the relationships here at Calvary St. Clemente would be able to grow and go deeper and deeper um, so that we can have that, that awesome, that just fullness of heart, uh, fullness of joy when we're around our brothers and sisters. So please bless this night. We ask that you would fill Adrian and fill Brandon and guide us as we go through and, and have this, this service. We want to worship you. We want to glorify you. We want to make your name great. And so we ask, Lord, that you would come and fill us tonight with your Holy Spirit and do exactly that. Glorify your name through us. So we pray these things in your son's name, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together here as we sing of the joy of the Lord. We worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. Oh, he opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing, oh, we sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were all beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let 
house of the Lord. Oh, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. Oh, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Oh, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. 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 Jesus, you lived your life pure as one can be. Jesus. Your sacrifice paid the debt that set us free. Never will we tire of singing. Holy is the mighty one who was and is and surely is to come. Every time. You're coming soon, Almighty King of Kings. We'll sing of your unfailing love. We testify your saving grace. We'll never give the stones a chance to praise you. Testifies, hallelujah, hallelujah. The moon and the stars resound, hallelujah, hallelujah. All of heaven's joy surrounds, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are holy.
10,000 years We'll never tire of singing, singing Holy is the Lamb of God Worthy is the Lion of Judah When we've been there 10,000 years We'll never tire Hallelujah, hallelujah. All creation testifies, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sun, moon, and the stars resound, hallelujah, hallelujah. All of heaven's joy. So round, hallelujah, hallelujah, you are holy, you are worthy, hallelujah. When we've been there ten thousand years, we'll never tire of singing.
shines, defeating the darkness. Those who have faith, trust in your name, will see their reward. For you are worthy to receive all the power. And you are worthy to receive all the glory. For as you purchased us from death, we are now live to serve our King. Your blood has saved us from the grave. That's why we sing. For you are worthy to receive all the power. And you are worthy to receive all the glory. For as you purchased us from death, we now live to serve our King. Your blood has saved us from the grave. That's why we sing. We sing to the one who sits upon the throne. And to the Lamb slain to receive our sin. Be all blessing, blessing and honor. Blessing and honor, glory and power forever, amen. Blessing and honor, glory and power forever, amen. Blessing and honor, glory and power forever, amen. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those all around me Worthy. worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. There is none beings like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love. 
to those around me. Oh, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. my life. Oh, I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Oh, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. For I will build my life. that love today be able to see how your love is poured out on us this evening we are so thankful that you have died for us that you have made that way Lord that we can be able to be with you eternally God let us be able to experience that joy even today in Jesus name amen amen hey why don't you guys greet each other say hi give someone a big hug 
And then you guys can grab a seat. So we got a few announcements for you guys tonight, uh, some things that are going on in the church. And um, first thing is we got the West Coast Worship Conference that's going on. It actually started today. Uh, that's up in Chino at Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. Uh, that's where Pastor Holland is right now. It's where Matt is. I, I don't know if the other guys from the team are up there as well. Um, but you guys are invited. If you guys want to participate in that, you guys can go to our website and register. Uh, go to Calvary, Calvary org. And you guys can still participate if you want to go. If you want to go up just for like one day, you guys can do that. Uh, but it's a good opportunity to learn more about worship. And I'm sure they're going to have some pretty epic worship uh, sessions up there. Also, coming up at our church this Sunday, the 12th, we're going to have a ministry leaders meeting. So if you guys are interested in serving the church, you want to be a leader, you want to maybe in the future serve, lead something, or you're saying like, hey, I just want to learn what's going on in the church. Come to this meeting. It's open for everybody. So that'll be 1.30 in the afternoon this Sunday uh, after we do, uh, after the service. So we kind of have a break to run and get lunch, and then you can come back in here. It'll be from 1.30 to 3. Um, and then we also have the following Sunday, which will be the 19th, we have the Father's Day um, Meat Church. Um, so we're going to have a barbecue, kind of a cookout. Uh, I think they kind of make it like a, they always made a competition in the past, didn't they? Like cook up who can cook up the best thing. I don't know how you decide that, but um, but still a lot of great meat. So if you guys want to bring some meat and you want to barbecue some meat, this is your opportunity. Uh, if you say, well, hey, you know what? I don't want to do some meat. I don't want to be in part a part of that competition. You can bring a side dish. You can bring drinks. You can bring desserts. All sorts of stuff. If you guys want to sign up, there's a uh, you can sign up at the table in the back or just bring your stuff. You know, want to bring a salad? That's awesome too. Okay, so think about that. That'll be Father's Day, the 19th. We're gonna have a big meal after the service, so that'll be a really cool opportunity. And then besides that, if you guys are looking for opportunities to serve, we got tons of opportunities, whether it be in the children's ministry or whether it be uh, being an usher here at the service or in our security team, we're always looking for more people. So these are opportunities for you guys to think about that because uh, it could be a great opportunity for you guys to serve uh, the Lord at the church, right? So what we have now is we have, um, well, almost every year, we, uh, Calvary St. Clemente takes a trip over to Israel. And uh, next year, we will have that trip going on. And if you guys want to be part of that, uh, then you got to start planning ahead. You know, it's not just something you just hop in like two weeks before. you got to plan it out and you got to save up money. It does cost a little bit. So uh, we have a little promo video about the trip to Israel. So it kind of uh, gets you guys excited it's amazing about this. So check it out. That that's the trip that I wanted to take, that I believe everybody should take because of the fact that what it's going to do for you in your faith, in your understanding, your belief, your love, your fellowship, it's, it's all rolled into one when you go to Israel. Going to Israel blew my mind. I wanted to just check it off my to-do list. Now I came back going, when are we going to go again? And I think when I tell people, what was your favorite thing? I said, I, I had a favorite thing every day, so there's not one favorite thing. But just the idea that we are seeing God's word come to life and just understanding more about Israel and God's hand on Israel. And yet the, the significance and importance of God's word in our lives. Of the excitement of of getting ready to see each place as you're coming up to it just knowing where you're going next was definitely just exciting just to just to know that you were going to go you know to Masada going to Jerusalem going to Capernaum and you're just waiting to to see the Sea of Galilee for the first time um, that was definitely definitely awesome to uh, to experience that excitement and then when you finally get there you're just overwhelmed Join Pastor David, Marie, and Holland and Roxy Davis and others March 9th through 20th, 2023 
for our next trip to Israel. We are currently taking an interest sign up at the gazebo after our services and online at calvaryccv.org. We would love to have you join us on this life changing tour. All right, it's pretty exciting. So, check out their website um, for Calvary Chino Valley. Um, but something to think about it is an awesome opportunity. It does cost a little bit, but if you guys plan, save up, this is something that's totally doable for anyone. So, um, if you guys want to do that, that's pretty awesome. So, Without further ado, I want to invite our youth pastor, Brandon Phillips, come on up here, and we're going to study the Word of God. <laughs> An applause is a lot better than, like, cheese pizza being thrown at me. It's usually what happens. I just got an alert on my thing saying um, angels are playing the socks, so go angels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hello, everybody. As Tom mentioned, I am Brandon Phillips, and yeah, we run the youth. We, I, Eli, everybody who supports the youth group here. It's called Vert Youth, and it's kind of cool. About over two years into it now, and there wasn't anything really going on for the youth at this church, and so when Hall and I were having coffee one day at his house, and I was telling him how I was praying about just and, and seeking opportunities in other churches to do ministry, and there basically, there wasn't, doors were closing, and he goes, well, what do you need? I was like, I don't know, just a place to do it? He goes, okay, here's the key. I'm like, oh, sweet, <laughs> okay, let's do this. So, a couple years into it now, we've seen a lot of kids, unchurched kids, give their lives to the Lord, baptized, get their first Bibles, praying for services, just not perfect kids, <laughs> finding a perfect God, and so they've been going to camp, and it, it's just, it's cool, so the Lord's been doing something amazing, and um, I just want to thank all of you guys for the support and prayer, and however you guys support it, so yeah, that's what I do, and on the on the side of um, uh, pastoring the youth, I also uh, coach some surfing, and that's kind of like my tent making, that's how I make a living, and all that good stuff, so pretty pretty sad life for me, I guess. <laughs> Three wonderful kids, a, a wife, and all that stuff, so the Lord's blessed me, and and so tonight we get to get into his word together, so if you could open up to Acts 18. We're going to go uh, verses 1 through 11. We've been working our way through the gospel of John, and then now we're going through Acts, and we're actually ahead of Acts 18, but 18 to 19 is just so, it's such a such a time as this right now in our culture and for the kids and it's one of those things I always tell them like I'm not here to entertain you I'm here to give you the message of God and God's word so he can equip you and the battle's not coming out of far off you're in the battle right now and these kids are 10 years old 11 years old they you know they're they're in the battle they're in a public school system or private school or or charters or whatever it is and there are people around them, their peers on teams and classrooms that are I, struggling with same-sex attraction. They're struggling with self-harm. They're struggling with every single possible thing that you could think of under the sun. And these 10-year-olds are struggling with it. And it's right at their doorstep. And so it's really cool to be able to go through the acts, for, especially this time, when it just kind of seems like Satan's like kind of turning the volume up to 10, isn't it? So... Here we are, Acts 18, and we did this one actually a couple weeks ago with the kids, but as I was, um, as I was just praying and going through it, the Lord kind of brought me back to this, and it's so great because it's Paul now bringing the gospel into Corinth, and as we read, we'll get more into it, but let's, let's just go right into it. So Lord, thank you so much for this time, and make your message known to us. Encourage us, Lord. Strengthen us so we can go out and bring the gospel to anyone who's close enough to reach, to anyone who has ears to hear. And we can pull people from death and into life, from hell into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. All right, guys, so let's follow along if you want to read with me. Acts 18, starting in verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aqu Aquila. Aquila. I, I, always had, <laughs> I always had trouble with that. In my head, I say it right, and then when I say it out loud, I blow it. <laughs> Aquila. Aquila? No. See, I'm doing it again. Aquila. 
Okay. Okay, so this two seconds. My daughter always asks me on Friday, what comes next? Like, what day is tomorrow? Because she's wondering if she has school or not. And I, I made up this thing called Aquila Day. And now I, every time I read Aquila, it, I like, it t sidetracks me. So she thinks Saturday is called Aquila Day. <laughs> She'll found, uh, found out in like high school or something. It's not. Okay, sorry. Born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So because he was of the same, tra because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when, the, when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. For now, from now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent for I am with you and no one will attack you or hurt you for I have many people in the city. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. I love that. Verse, verse 9 and 10 right in there. That's like, that's the, that's the meat right in there. So Paul now is going into Corinth, right, bringing the gospel. And one of the things that in, in studying, you come to find out what kind of town Corinth is. And to really grasp how radical it is for Paul to be going into this town, it's like, it, it, it was compared to, um, a we can compare it, I guess, to a place like L.A., New York, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Laguna Beach. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> I was born there, too. <laughs> but it, was, it, was, it seemed like it was so good on the outside, but really it was the sin, sitter, sin, city, uh, sin center of the Roman Empire. They called it Vanity Fair which I find really interesting, right? Like Vanity Fair, like it, it's all good. Whatever you do, it's all fair in love and war. But it was funny because some of the biggest brands are owned by a company this day called, a company called Vanity Fair. Vans being number one, or not number one, but more number one in my book, I guess. But it was, on the surface, it looks so successful, right? I, I imagine like a lot of wealth, um, nice towers, probably just anywhere you go, like someone's driving a super nice carriage, I don't know, like nice garments, um, shops, things that you could do. The best of the best is all there. But when you get into the city, not just the surface, and you start to see what was happening to the people kind of under the skin of the city, it was just full of darkness, so much so that it was referred to the sin center of the Roman Empire. And so, yeah, they had churches, they had synagogues, everything. It all looked super nice on the surface, but the hearts of the people was the issue. And so to really get this idea of how, how, how bad it was, we could look at Romans 1, uh, verses 20 through 32. For since the creation of the world, of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither, bless you, they neither glorified him as God nor gave him thanks, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. And exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human being and mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, 
God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts, even their women with exchanged natural sexual relations with, for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abound natural relations with the women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with, what, with other men and received in themselves the due penalty of their error for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to, the, to a depraved mind so that they do whatever, so that they do, do ought, what not ought to be done. Sorry, I lost my spot. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They, are go they gossip, they're gossipers, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. So Paul writes this, while in Corinth, he's observing what's going on, and he's writing Romans. And this description of the people that he's interacting with, well, does it remind you of the world we live in today? It sure does to me. I'm reading, and I'm like, wow, they he really did go to Laguna. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I keep ripping on Laguna just because I love it could be worse. I could have said San Francisco. One's north and one's south. <laughs> That's the only difference. <laughs> north of us right now, so nope, no difference at all. But it does, right? It really does sound like Paul is describing the world and the culture we're in today. But nevertheless, what does Paul do? Does Paul, when he's about to go in, he's praying with the Lord, and Holy Spirit's like, Corinth, now. Now's your time. He goes, come on, there's no one there, Lord. Sin center of the Roman Empire. The whole world, this is the worst of the worst. No, he doesn't. He goes in, preaches the gospel, and while he's there, he meets Aquila and Priscilla. And it says in verse 3 that they were of the same trade. They were tent makers. Now, I, when I read that, I was like, ah, oh, I like that. I like that Paul meets a couple like him that they could relate with. Just the Holy Spirit brought him for that pr point and purpose. But when thinking about it, I'm like, wow, Paul, you know, this guy is such a, he's an educated man. Acts 22, of course, he sa it tells us that, um, that he was born in Tarsus but brought up in the city and, and stuttered under Gamaliel, Gamaliel, and he was taught the law and that it describes him that he was indeed persecuting Christians with zeal. So he was a Pharisee and, and he, he is educated and all of these things, but the culture of the Jews, I was like, well, why is he a tent maker if he was kind of like a, this, this kind of like this educated, well-educated man, this exquisite man, you know, like part of that elite. Well, part of the Jewish culture was that you had to have a trade or know a skill. And I thought, oh, that's, that, that's smart on the Lord to be like, hey, establish this so that way during hard times or wherever you go that you could apply a trade, have a skill that you could feed yourself with. So on top of all this, Paul's education and how he learns how to make tents, um, he goes in. And when I was thinking, I'm like, wow, God really does use every single thing in our lives for an exact moment, an exact time. Nothing goes to waste, right? I wonder if Paul, when, or as Saul growing up, was like, oh, what, really tent making? I guess it's kind of cool. I can do this, and I don't know what it was, but whatever Paul, 
whatever God is doing in Saul's life at that time has future implications for this time as he goes into Corinth, as he goes into the darkest place, he has now met Aquila and Priscilla, who are all also fellow tent makers, fellow Jews, and also fellow Christians in a town like Corinth. And so when you go in and you shed light in the darkness, when you go in to be the hands and feet of Jesus in whatever sin center <laughs> that we're going into, because remember, sin's all around us. It's, it's like the whole world now is this one big center of sin. You really do want someone to link arms with. You don't want to go at it alone. And when the Lord brings someone alongside of you that you're like, I can link arms with this guy or this girl, and we can go, and they get me, and I get them, and they got my back, and we can make tents, and we can feed each other, and we can dwell in those tents, and then we could go out. Man, it's it just, you start to think about all those little things. It's like, why, God? Why did you give me that desire or that skill? Well, it's like, well, for such a time as this. I love how God will unite people in the ministry, and that bond, it forms so much bigger and deeper and stronger than really, like, any other relationship. Like, not just a working relationship or even a family relationship, but when you're linked arms with somebody in the ministry, and you go out and share the gospel, and you pray for people, and you just watch what the Lord does, it's like that bond is something so, so special. I remember the, you know, actually, <laughs> I don't know why this is, but Chris and Karen Williams, you guys might remember them. I, they lived behind Gina's for a while, but they shared the gospel really with me for the first time and like sat me down, and, and I grew so much. And even with my then girlfriend, but now wife, it's like we grew so much under these people who are linked arms to the ministry that grew us. And and that was just such a great example. It's like, that's the kind of marriage I want to have with my wife, that we see young people, young couples, and be like, come on in, have a meal, and then share the gospel, answer questions, just meet them where they're at. It's, it's, a, it's incredible. So no matter where Paul goes, he did what he did, making tents. The one thing that was always on his mind, right, was sharing the gospel. It was always about bringing the message of Jesus to the Jews first, and when they were not having it, shake off his sandals, sink off his robe. And he's like, fine, the blood be on. It's like, you guys know. I've reasoned with you. Now I'm off to the Gentiles. I like that. I like that. No matter how sinful the place, he was ready to go. He was ready to reason, and that he was linked with another person in the ministry. And he was ready to go out. And really, when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, man, the same is so true for all of us. No matter where we're at, right? Like, that's us. We should have that mind of Paul. No matter where we are or what we do, I was thinking about, about like, different occupations. It's like whether you're a pilot, whether you're an engineer, a designer, musician, mother, father, or just a simple surf coach. It's like, no matter where we go, our first job really should be to share Jesus with people. It doesn't matter our education or lack thereof, or you could be like Aquila, which tent maker, or Paul, educated man, also a tent maker, the highest in like the ministry or whatever, and it's just like that message of Jesus stays the same. That really should be our heart and our mind. See, we're followers of Christ, and the message of Jesus should always be ready to go out. I don't know, when reading through all of that, it's just like simple, practical, but yet I was just trying to think about it in like real time in their day. So let's go to verse 9 and 10. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. And Jesus says, do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you or hurt you, for I have many people in this city. 
that I, when reading that, I'm just like, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, we need not to be afraid to bring the message. Jesus says to Paul, do not be afraid but to speak, for he has many people in the city. Jesus has people who he wants to reach, he wants to transform in Corinth, the sin city, the Vegas, like the worst of the, all the places. Vegas gets a pretty bad rap. It's probably like really mellow and nice, like around the strip or whatever. <laughs> it's like it's not all bad. And <laughs> it's just so easy. They call themselves Sin City. Like you're asking for it. But the worst of all, the worst of places, Paul goes in because Jesus told him, hey, I have people there in the midst of it, in the thick of it, the worst places I have people that are ready to receive. So just like Paul, we cannot be silent either. You know, I read in the, the paper down here recently that there was big old BLM protest going on, and at first I was like, man, good luck doing that in San Clemente. Kind of, I was kind of, I was kind of mad. I was like, dude, these people are just like, they're so demonic. It's really crazy. You just feel their, the presence of them is demonic. But then I got thinking, I'm like, well, what's the difference between them and the Paul's, the, the Gentiles that Paul's trying to reach in Corinth? You know, probably not much other than the color of their hair. They celebrate killing babies, but yet riot over criminals being killed. But then it hit me. In the midst of all of this, in the midst of this chaos that's going on, I'm sure there's people who are standing in there just going, like, is this really where I should be? Maybe though there's somebody in that group who is ready to receive Jesus. And it could happen in the midst of a protest like that. It could happen standing out front of the abortion clinic or wherever. It's like wherever we go, wherever we think there might be, I'm not saying go into like, hey, it's 2 a.m. I'm going to the bar to preach Jesus. Like that's, I mean, maybe, I guess, if that's your ministry. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to Ocean's Eleven to play poker and I'm going to share Jesus. <laughs> I mean, whatever, it's legal. But, <laughs> but there are people that Jesus has. There are hearts and minds that are prepared to hear the gospel if we would only just bring it to them. It doesn't have to be this. I love this. Like, this is where we come and get built up and where we can just gather together and pray for one another and, and get sent out. But it's like, when you're in the middle of Costco gas and it's out down to the street on Doheny Park Road and you're just like, I'm going to do the unthinkable, I'm going to cut in line. <laughs> no, but it's like, in, where are these opportunities, right? It could be the unlikely place in the middle of the darkness or it could be in the middle of a long, long line at Costco where people's blood is just boiling and they're about ready to go demonic <laughs> or whatever. But that's it. Like, there are people that want, that God wants to reach. It's like there is something going on. Evil is not hiding anymore. It is out in the open. They are not, evil is not disguised. Satan is, is not within, like, the trees of the shadows anymore. He is just, boom, I'm right down PCH. I am right here in the open. Do something about it, because if you don't, I'm taking these people with me. You see, this is our responsibility. If our, if our towns are turning into this type of Corinth themselves, or if our households are turning in to a type of Corinth, becoming more and more broken, children without parents or structure or real love, if my brothers in Christ or even sisters in Christ are growing weary and wanting to turn away, asking themselves, does it even matter anymore? Every time I go to church, same old building, then I go in, same old Keurig 
bad coffee. <sighs> Someone gonna do something about this? Seriously, someone gonna do something? About it? <laughs> but it's like if if this is what's happening in our culture, it's this is my responsibility. I need a swift kick in the pants to get myself back in the game, to get back in the fight. If things are turning into Corinth around me, in my church, in my home, in my city, then it's like well. I'm the Christian. I've got the word of life. Like this is my this is this is my responsibility to try to reach someone close enough me to, close enough to me to reach my neighbor. Because after all, this is the message of the Bible, isn't it? It contains the word of life. But if we don't speak the word of life, the good news, who will? Cuz they're not going to get it off of YouTube or the history channel or whatever. We should not be scared. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The most sinful place in the modern world, God tells Paul to speak and to not be silent because there are people that are going to respond. See, God has given us everything we need to speak boldly with authority the good news of Jesus. We need to find the area to relate in people's lives, whether it's on the beach, going on a walk, surfing, picking up trash, whether your thing is music, and you're at some terrible band at the coach house, you say, that's a good place to receive Jesus because their lineups are terrible. <laughs> it's like, it might as well just be a church. <laughs> Whatever your thing is cars, you know, like sometimes I see the car shows and all that cool stuff. I love car shows. But that's a great place just to open up and be like, cars? Yeah, what's under the hood? Oh, cool. And then see how the Holy Spirit leads you. Shoot, you could even be at like the, what's that, el the animal shelter up there looking at cats or something. If anyone needs salvation, it's cats. <laughs> no cats in heaven. I'm just kidding. I actually really love cats. I had the greatest cats ever. They all went to the farm, though, my mom said. <laughs> One of these days, I'll find them. Or whether it's tent making, you know, you guys get what I'm saying. Be ready. Be ready to share. There is good news out there. It's full of bad news everywhere. It's because they figured out that we as people love bad news. <laughs> we just love it. There's good news for people who love bad news. And we have it. We have it here. Daily. We can, we got it. The good news that there is a God who loves them, that they can be forgiven because Jesus died for their sins and rose again, and he's coming again soon. And it's our responsibility to be the message of hope, of good news to people who are destined for hell. Today, and it was like, hey, pray for so-and-so's family because their son just died in a car crash. And it's like, blink of an eye, you're gone. There's so many people around us, so many people that it's like, Jesus is like, they are ready. There's people who I have. If you would just open your mouths and give them the message. So I tell this to all the kids. I have an awesome kid. He's like a little, he's a little leader. He sits right next to, in sixth grade, someone who identifies as a lesbian. 
And I'm like, dude, that's your mission. That is who you are after every time you sit down at, well, not anymore because it's summer. When you see them throughout the summer break, but it, even leading up to it, I'm like, that's who you are praying for. Every time you go to school, I want you to be praying, Lord, how do I bring the gospel to her today? And that one girl who is experiencing torment, really, internally, can look at him and be like, I don't know what it is, but it's starting to make sense. I don't know what that is about you, but it's starting to grow on me. I can see that light shining. What is that? I want more. I don't have all the answers, but why don't you come out to a Friday night? It's fun. There's pizza, and you just kind of be a kid. Just be who you are, because he's he knew you before the womb. He's numbered the hairs on your head. And it, the time is now to let, like, I, reading this, I'm like, I need a good kick in the pants. I just imagine some awesome old grandpa who's like, I'm going to give you a kick in your britches, boy. I'm like, yeah, thank you. I needed to hear that. And I think we also need to hear that too as the church. We have all the power because it's given to, fr- to us from heaven. And it's like, what are we going to fear? Who are we going to fear? Hey, if they say no and they deny it, that's between them and the Lord. But if they say yes, then you're like, oh, really? Okay. I guess we pray. <laughs> you're like, let's pray then right here, right now. Yeah, let's pray. Okay. Okay. Let's pray. Because that's all of the message for tonight. That was so weak. <laughs> it's not for me, though. It's for the Lord. <laughs> Let's pray. And then pray for each other, right? Let's pray for each other. I'll pray corporately for all of us that we would be aware, be able to see past the surface and into people's hearts because that's the Holy Spirit working in us. We're able to see past the physical and into the spiritual, and we can do that this week. Father, You have people that you want to reach in these last days. Satan, our enemy, is working overtime, and here we are. Lord, we are warriors. Let us not forget that. I cannot forget that we are in a battle right now, and we need to practice We need to practice with our weapons of warfare, which is prayer. We need to be able to be thinking about who it is that you want to reach in our daily lives. We need to put on this mind constantly right now, because this is really the only way that we're going to see a better tomorrow until you come again, is if we continue to pray, see through the physical and into the spiritual. Lord, we ask for wisdom to be able to do this. And we do not doubt it. But we need it. We need the wisdom. We need the confidence, the boldness to speak the words of life to people around us, Lord. And in this time, I just ask that you would put on our hearts, put on our minds, somebody who needs to receive a text or a call and just say, hey, been thinking about you. How's your walk going? Have you been opening the Bible? How's that prayer? How's that sickness? How's the, how's your child doing? Are they still struggling? We don't have all the answers, but we know where the answers come from, and we know who wrote it. We know who is before the foundations of the earth, and point them, point them to you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for this activation upon our lives, that we would get busy. Thank you, Lord for this time, for your word. And thank you, Lord, for this church that we could come together in simplicity and honesty, just seeking you. And thank you, Lord, that you show up. Amen. By this time, all the kids run out and get candy. So (laughs) if you brought your Bible, I got candy. No, um, if you need prayer, I'm available. I mean, take this time and just, if there's someone that you want to pray over, pray for if you need prayer, just do it, you know? Like, look around. We're a small group of people, right? We're not a mega church. 
And so this is a good time just to be like, you know what? I don't just play church. I do. I do what the word says. And so, yeah, let's do that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Because the coffee's not going anywhere. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining today's program. We pray it was a blessing to you. Please visit calvarysanclemente.org. Now may the Lord bless you and those whom you love, and especially those whom nobody loves.